Diethylstilbestrol also known as stilbestrol or stilbostrol, is an estrogen medication which is mostly no longer used. In the past, it was widely used for a variety of indications including pregnancy support for women with a history of recurrent miscarriage, hormone therapy for menopausal symptoms and estrogen deficiency in women, treatment of prostate cancer in men and breast cancer in women, and other uses. While most commonly taken by mouth, day was available for use by other roots as well, for instance vaginal, topical, and by injection. Day is an estrogen, or an agonist of the estrogen receptors, the biological target of estrogens like estradiol. It is a synthetic and nonsteroidal estrogen of the stilbestrol group, and differs from the natural estrogen estradiol in various ways. Compared to estradiol, day has greatly improved bioavailability when taken by mouth, is more resistant to metabolism, and shows relatively increased effects in certain parts of the body like the liver and uterus. These differences result in day having an increased risk of blood clots, cardiovascular issues, and certain other adverse effects. Day was discovered in 1938. From about 1940 to 1971, the medication was given to pregnant women in the incorrect belief it would reduce the risk of pregnancy complications and losses. In 1971, Day was shown to cause clear cell carcinoma, a rare vaginal tumor, in girls and women who had been exposed to this medication in utero. The United States Food and Drug Administration subsequently withdrew approval of Day as a treatment for pregnant women. Follow-up studies have indicated that day also has the potential to cause a variety of significant adverse medical complications during the lifetimes of those exposed. The United States National Cancer Institute recommends women born to mothers who took day undergo special medical exams on a regular basis to screen for complications as a result of the medication. Individuals who were exposed to day during their mother's pregnancies are commonly referred to as day daughters and day sons. Since the discovery of the toxic effects of day, it has largely been discontinued and is now mostly no longer marketed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medical uses. Day has been used in the past for the following indications: recurrent miscarriage in pregnancy, Menopausal hormone therapy for the treatment of menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes and vaginal atrophy Hormone therapy for hypestrogenism e.g., gonadal dysgenesis, premature ovarian failure, and after oophorectomy Postpartum lactation suppression to prevent or reverse breast engorgement Gonorrheal vaginitis discontinued following the introduction of the antibiotic penicillin Prostate cancer and breast cancer Prevention of tall stature in tall adolescent girls As an emergency postcoital contraceptive As a means of chemical castration for hypersexuality and paraphilias in men and sex offenders Prevention of the testosterone flare at the start of gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonist GNRH agonist, therapy interest in the use of day to treat prostate cancer in men continues today. However, some researchers have advocated for the use of bioidentical parenteral estrogens like polyestradiol phosphate in favor of oral synthetic estrogens like day due to their much lower risk of cardiovascular toxicity. In addition to prostate cancer, some interest in the use of day to treat breast cancer in women continues today as well. However, similarly to the case of prostate cancer, some researchers have argued for the use bioidentical estrogens like estradiol instead of day for breast cancer. Side effects At doses above 1 mg per day by mouth, day is associated with high rates of side effects including nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, headache, and bloating, with an incidence of 15 to 50 percent. In studies of day as a form of high dose estrogen therapy for men with prostate cancer, it has been associated with considerable cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. The risk is dose dependent. A dosage of 5 mg per day day has been associated with a 36% increase in non-cancer related mostly cardiovascular deaths. In addition, there is an up to 15% incidence of venous thromboembolism. A 3 mg per day dosage of day has been associated with an incidence of thromboembolism of 9.6 to 17%, with an incidence of cardiovascular complications of 33.3%. 
A lower dosage of 1 mg per day day has been associated with a rate of death due to cardiovascular events of 14.8% relative to 8.3% for orchiectomy alone. In men treated with it for prostate cancer, day has been found to produce high rates of gynecomastia, breast development of 41 to 77%. Topic: Long-term effects. Day has been linked to a variety of long-term adverse effects, such as increased risk of vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma, vaginal adenosis, T-shaped uterus, uterine fibroids, incompetent cervix, breast cancer, infertility, hypogonadism, intersex defects, depression, and others, in women who were treated with it during pregnancy and or in their offspring. Overdose. Day has been assessed in the past in clinical studies at extremely high dosages of as much as 1,500 mg per day. Pharmacology Pharmacodynamics Estrogenic activity Day is an estrogen, specifically, it is a highly potent full agonist of both of the estrogen receptors ERs. It has approximately 468% and 295% of the affinity of estradiol at the ER alpha and ER beta, respectively. However, EC50 values of 0.18 nm and 0.06 nm of day for the ER alpha and ER beta, respectively, have been reported, suggesting, in spite of its binding affinity for the two receptors, several fold preference for activation of the ER beta over the ER alpha. A dosage of 1 mg per day day is approximately equivalent to a dosage of 50 micrograms per day ethanolestradiol in terms of systemic estrogenic potency. Similarly to ethanolestradiol, day shows a marked and disproportionately strong effect on liver protein synthesis. Whereas its systemic estrogenic potency was about 3.8 fold of that of estropipate sulfate, which has similar potency to micronized estradiol, the hepatic estrogenic potency of day was 28.4 fold that of estropipate or about 7.5 fold stronger potency for a dosage with equivalent systemic estrogenic effect. Day has at least three mechanisms of action in the treatment of prostate cancer in men. It suppresses gonadal androgen production and hence circulating androgen levels due to its antigonadotropic effects. It stimulates hepatic sex hormone binding globulin (SHBG) production, thereby increasing circulating levels of SHBG and decreasing the free fraction of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone (DHT) in the circulation, and it may have direct cytotoxic effects in the testes and prostate gland. Day has also been found to decrease DNA synthesis at high doses. Topic antigonadotropic effects Due to its estrogenic activity, day has antigonadotropic effects. That is, it exerts negative feedback on the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis HPG axis, suppresses the secretion of the gonadotropins, luteinizing hormone LH and follicle-stimulating hormone FSH, and suppresses sex hormone production as well as gamete production or maturation in the gonads. Day suppresses testosterone levels in men into the castrate range 50 nanograms per deciliter. Topic: Other activities. In addition to the ERs, an in vitro study found that day also possesses activity, albeit relatively weak, at a variety of other steroid hormone receptors. Whereas the study found EC50 values of 0.18 nm and 0.06 nm of day for the ER alpha and ER beta, respectively, the drug showed significant glucocorticoid activity at a concentration of 1 μm that surpassed that of 0.1 nm dexamethasone as well as significant antagonism of the androgen, progesterone, and mineralocorticoid receptors 75%, 85%, and 50% inhibition of positive control stimulation, respectively, at a concentration concentration of 1 μm. It also showed approximately 25% inhibition of the activation of PPAR gamma and LXR alpha at a concentration of 10 μm. 
The researchers stated that, to the best of their knowledge, they were the first to report such actions of day, and hypothesized that these actions could be involved in the clinical effects of day, for instance, in prostate cancer notably in which particularly high dosages of day are employed. However, they also noted that the importance of the activities requires further study in animal models at pharmacologically relevant doses. Day has been identified as an antagonist of all three isotypes of the estrogen related receptors ARES, the ARE alpha, ARE beta, and ARE gamma. Pharmacokinetics <laughs> Day is well absorbed with oral administration. With an oral dosage of 1 mg per day day, plasma levels of day at 20 hours following the last dose ranged between 0.9 to 1.9 ng per milliliter 3.4 to 7.1 nmol, l. The distribution half-life of day is 80 minutes. It has no affinity for SHBG or corticosteroid binding globulin, and hence is not bound to these proteins in the circulation. Day is metabolized mainly by glucuronidation and oxidation, with the latter including aromatic hydroxylation of the ethyl side chains and dehydrogenation into Z, Z dienestrol. It is also known to produce peroxypropioni as a metabolite. Day produces transient quinone-like reactive intermediates that cause cellular and genetic damage, which may explain the known carcinogenic effects of day in humans. However, other research suggests that the toxic effects of day may simply be due to overactivation of the ERs. The elimination half-life of day is 24 hours. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry. Day belongs to the stilbestrol 4-4-dihydroxystilbene group of compounds. It is a nonsteroidal open ring analog of the steroidal estrogen estradiol. Day was derived from the naturally occurring compound anethole, a weakly estrogenic constituent of anise and phenyl. Anethole was demethylated to form onyl and onyl then spontaneously dimerized into dianyl and hextrol, with day subsequently being synthesized via structural modification of hextrol. It has been determined via X-ray crystallography that the molecular dimensions of day are almost identical to those of estradiol, particularly in regards to the distance between the hydroxyl groups at either end of the molecules. History Synthesis Day was first synthesized in early 1938 by Leon Goldberg, then a graduate student of Sir Robert Robinson at the Dyson Perrins Laboratory at the University of Oxford. Goldberg's research was based on work by Wilfred Lawson at the Courtauld Institute of Biochemistry, led by Sir Edward Charles Dodds at Middlesex Hospital Medical School now part of University College London. A report of its synthesis was published in Nature on 5 February 1938. Day research was funded by the UK Medical Research Council, MRC, which had a policy against patenting drugs discovered using public funds. Because it was not patented, Day was produced by more than 200 pharmaceutical and chemical companies worldwide. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Clinical use. Day in tablets up to 5 mg was approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration FDA on September 19, 1941 for four indications, gonorrheal vaginitis, atrophic vaginitis, menopausal symptoms, and postpartum lactation suppression to prevent breast engorgement. The gonorrheal vaginitis indication was dropped when the antibiotic penicillin became available. From its very inception, the drug was highly controversial. In 1941, Charles Huggins and Clarence Hodges at the University of Chicago found Day to be the first effective drug for the treatment of metastatic prostate cancer. Orchiectomy or Day or both were the standard initial treatment for symptomatic advanced prostate cancer for over 40 years, until the GnRH agonist Luprorelin was found to have efficacy similar to Day without estrogenic effects and was approved in 1985. From the 1940s until the late 1980s, Day was FDA approved as estrogen replacement therapy for estrogen deficiency states such as ovarian dysgenesis, premature ovarian failure, and after oophorectomy. In the 1940s, Day was used off-label to prevent adverse pregnancy outcomes in women with a history of miscarriage. 
On July 1, 1947, the FDA approved the use of day for this indication. The first such approval was granted to Bristol Myers Squibb, allowing use of 25 mg and later 100 mg tablets of day during pregnancy. Approvals were granted to other pharmaceutical companies later in the same year. The recommended regimen started at 5 mg per day in the 7th and 8th weeks of pregnancy from first day of last menstrual period, increased every other week by 5 mg per day through the 14th week, and then increased every week by 5 mg per day from 25 mg per day in the 15th week to 125 mg per day in the 35th week of pregnancy. Day was originally considered effective and safe for both the pregnant woman and the developing baby. It was aggressively marketed and routinely prescribed. Sales peaked in 1953. In the early 1950s, a double-blind clinical trial at the University of Chicago assessed pregnancy outcomes in women who were assigned to either receive or not receive day. The study showed no benefit of taking day during pregnancy. Adverse pregnancy outcomes were not reduced in the women who were given day. By the late 1960s, six of seven leading textbooks of obstetrics said Day was ineffective at preventing miscarriage, despite an absence of evidence supporting the use of Day to prevent adverse pregnancy outcomes. Day continued to be given to pregnant women through the 1960s. In 1971, a report published in the New England Journal of Medicine showed a probable link between Day and vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma in girls and young women who had been exposed to this drug in utero. Later in the same year, the FDA sent an FDA drug bulletin to all U.S. physicians advising against the use of day in pregnant women. The FDA also removed prevention of miscarriage as an indication for day use and added pregnancy as a contraindication for day use. On February 5, 1975, the FDA ordered 25 mg and 100 mg tablets of day withdrawn, effective February 18, 1975. The number of persons exposed to day during pregnancy or in utero during 1940-1971 is unknown, but may be as high as 2 million in the United States. Day was also used in other countries, most notably France, the Netherlands, and Great Britain. From the 1950s through the beginning of the 1970s, day was prescribed to prepubescent girls to begin puberty and thus stop growth by closing growth plates in the bones. Despite its clear link to cancer, doctors continued to recommend the hormone for excess height. In 1960, day was found to be more effective than androgens in the treatment of advanced breast cancer in postmenopausal women. Day was the hormonal treatment of choice for advanced breast cancer in postmenopausal women until 1977, when the FDA approved tamoxifen, a selective estrogen receptor modulator with efficacy similar to day but fewer side effects. Several sources from medical literature in the 1970s and 1980s indicate that day was used for treatment of transgender individuals. In 1973, in an attempt to restrict off label use of day as a postcoital contraceptive, which had become prevalent at many universities. City Health Services following publication of an influential study in 1971 in JAMA to emergency situations such as rape, an FDA drug bulletin was sent to all U.S. physicians and pharmacists that said the FDA had approved, under restricted conditions, postcoital contraceptive use of day. In 1975, the FDA said it had not actually given and never did give approval to any manufacturer to market day as a postcoital contraceptive, but would approve that indication for emergency situations such as rape or in if a manufacturer provided patient labeling and special packaging as set out in a FDA final rule published in 1975. To discourage off-label use of day as a postcoital contraceptive, the FDA in 1975 removed day 25 mg tablets from the market and ordered the labeling of lower doses 5 mg and lower of day still approved for other indications changed to state, this drug product should not be used as a postcoital contraceptive. In block capital letters on the first line of the physician prescribing information package insert and in a prominent and conspicuous location of the container and carton label. In the 1980s, off-label use of the USP regimen of certain regular combined oral contraceptive pills superseded off-label use of day as a postcoital contraceptive. In 1978, the FDA removed postpartum lactation suppression to prevent breast engorgement from their approved indications for day and other estrogens. In the 1990s, the only approved indications for day were treatment of advanced prostate cancer and treatment of advanced breast cancer in postmenopausal women. 
The last remaining U.S. manufacturer of Day, Eli Lilly, stopped making and marketing it in 1997. Topic: <laughs> Lawsuits. In the 1970s, the negative publicity surrounding the discovery of Dess's long-term effects resulted in a huge wave of lawsuits in the United States against its manufacturers. These culminated in a landmark 1980 decision of the Supreme Court of California, Sindel v. Abbott Laboratories, in which the court imposed a rebuttable presumption of market share liability upon all day manufacturers, proportional to their share of the market at the time the drug was consumed by the mother of a particular plaintiff. A lawsuit was filed in Boston Federal Court by 53 day daughters who say their breast cancers were the result of day being prescribed to their mothers while pregnant with them. Their cases survived a Daubert hearing. In 2013, the Fecho sisters who initiated the breast cancer day link litigation agreed to an undisclosed settlement amount on the second day of trial. The remaining litigants have received various settlements. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Society and Culture. Alan Turing, the groundbreaking cryptographer, founder of computing science and programmable computers, who also proposed the actual theoretical model of biological morphogenesis, was forced onto the medication to induce chemical castration as a punitive treatment for homosexual behavior, shortly before he died in ambiguous circumstances. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Veterinary use. Topic. Canine incontinence Day has been very successful in treating female canine incontinence stemming from poor sphincter control. It is still available from compounding pharmacies, and at the low 1 mg dose, does not have the carcinogenic properties that were so problematic in humans. It is generally administered once a day for 7 to 10 days and then once every week as needed. Topic. Livestock growth promotion The greatest usage of day was in the livestock industry, used to improve feed conversion in beef and poultry. During the 1960s, day was used as a growth hormone in the beef and poultry industries. It was later found to cause cancer by 1971, but was not phased out until 1979. When day was discovered to be harmful to humans, it was moved to veterinary use. <laughs> 